Hello and welcome to a special episode of The Source. Today we're going to look back on a little trip I took over the summer to Hamilton, Ontario to follow up on a story we've been talking about for months. Remember in June when 20 or so environmental lobbyists, G20 anarchist rioters, Occupy Wall Street types and idle no more protesters broke in to an oil pipeline pumping station in the small town of Westover, Ontario, kicked out the workers there and illegally occupied that pumping station for six days until police finally arrested them. Well, I went out to Westover in June, the day the police cleared those trespassers out. Have a look. I spoke to some of the local citizens of Westover who were terrified by these trespassers and deeply worried about the Mohawk warrior flags they were flying. Could this be another Oka or Caledonia? And I spoke with some of the organizers of the protest itself that resulted in several protesters being charged, although the organizers themselves were not arrested that day. Here, remember this? Yep. Well, so how far away is that from here? 35 minutes. Is there a rule yep. that we weren't going to be talking to this? Uh, oh, oh, is there a rule that, uh, are you, are you yeah. telling Floyd that he can't talk to anybody? Well, I mean, Floyd can talk to whoever Floyd wants to talk to. Okay, do you want to talk to me, Floyd? No, I'll listen to the herbal. I'll listen to her. Listen. Okay, does she tell you what to do? Yeah. So yeah. she's sort of colonizing your mind. I'm not here, I'm just a supporter. So I'll listen to what they got to say. How do you feel about a young white girl telling an Aboriginal man he can't speak? I think I might be a little darker than uh, Floyd. Here. No. How do you know that I'm not Aboriginal? No, I don't think I'll talk anymore. I'll listen to Alicia here. Okay, she's I, your I she's your new you, colonizer. I got that white woman telling the Aboriginal elder to shut up was Alicia Patron, a staff member of an environmental lobby group called Environmental Defense, who was one of the organizers of the occupation. You can see she was a bit of a boss, telling other people what to do which is bizarre and outrageous, given that Environmental Defense, the company that employs her, has charitable tax status from Revenue Canada. So a bunch of those trespassers who were arrested back in June had a court date yesterday in Hamilton, and they announced they weren't going to go quietly. They were going to have a big rally and march through the streets of Hamilton yesterday before going to the court. So naturally, I thought I'd join them with a couple of cameras in tow. I'm going to show you some of the film footage we took yesterday. It's fascinating, not because it was that interesting a protest. It was fairly boring at first glance. But on, on second glance and third glance, I think I've cracked. The code, I, I think going out there helped me finally understand what's going on in Canada with the anti-oil sands and anti-pipeline protests and other protests too, from Occupy Toronto to I Don't Know More to even the anti-GMO food protests. It all sort of clicked just by going out there and hanging out with them for a couple hours and walking with them and listening to them and talking to them. Because I think I got to know them a little bit. I, I have three simple conclusions that I've come to. I know they sound really simple once you hear them, but until you can figure it out, they're elusive. At least they were for me. Yesterday was my aha moment when all the puzzle pieces finally fit. Here, let me show you. I figured out three things. The first is this. Environmental protesters know very little about the environment, very little about the oil sands or pipelines or energy in Canada or really science at all. And what they claim they know is often false. These aren't experts. They're know-nothings. No, that's not even true. They, they know less than nothing. They're actually making the world a dumber place, especially the reporters who regurgitate these protesters' claims. Here, let me prove to you this first point. I just walked up to this one protester, all friendly-like, and asked her a simple question about the pipeline she was protesting against. Remember, it's called Line 9. It's been in the ground since the 1970s, pumping oil without incident for nearly 40 years. Now, right now, OPEC oil is brought in by tanker ship and then pumped from the east to the west. And the pipeline company wants to switch that to reverse the flow from west to east to replace that OPEC conflict oil from Saudi Arabia and Algeria with Canadian ethical oil from Alberta. So there's oil in the pipeline right now. The company just wants to switch the country the oil is from. Anyways. Let me show you. These folks said they were worried about oil spills and human rights and things like that. So I put a simple question to her. Do you prefer the oil that's in the pipeline now, that OPEC oil coming in from OPEC tankers? Yes, of course. It's sweet oil. <laughs> Pardon me? Do environmental protesters like oil if it's sweet? Oil, sweet oil just means it has less sulfur in it, less than 1%. Like... Alaska North Slope oil has, as in the oil that was in the Exxon Valdez. Now, now, do you think this protester even knows what she means by saying she likes sweet oil? Of course she likes sweet oil. Do you, do you think she knows it's just as black and just as uh, oily 
a sour oil, oil would say 3% sulfur in it, like the oil science. Do you think she could even tell the difference? Or do you think she was just trying to come up with some phrase that made her sound smart for why she preferred Saudi oil in the Line 9 pipeline, but was out there protesting against Canadian oil instead? So I, I asked her about something that maybe she cared about more than the percentage of sulfur in the oil. That is, how much blood is in the oil. Aren't you worried about human rights in OPEC countries? Well, I'm, I'm really concerned about human rights in the world. And Aren't Saudi Arabia and OPEC countries some of the worst human rights abusers? Like the way they treat women, they're, they're sexist there. Do you think that it doesn't exist here? So you think that Canada and Saudi Arabia are morally the same when it comes to women? I don't think that we're in a position to judge between the of how women are treated. Really? A protester who's condemning the morality of Canadian oil doesn't think she has the moral standing to condemn oil in a theocratic dictatorship that forces women to wear burqas, that doesn't allow women to drive, let alone vote, that makes it a crime to be raped. Seriously, that's the Sharia crime of adultery. If a man rapes you, you're guilty. And this protester doesn't think we can judge that because we're just as bad. And after all, Saudi oil has 2% less sulfur in it than oil sands oil, don't you know? <laughs> well, I wasn't done asking old hippies about their moral compasses, I'll tell you that. I wasn't done asking about science and economics and, you know, facts. Here, let me make it very, very simple. If you had two gas pumps to fill up your car, one was made in Canada oil and one was made in Saudi Arabia, which would you choose? I would choose the air pump to fill up my bicycle tires. Do you have a car? I have a car. And I use it as little as possible. And when you do use it, what do you fill, uh, would you fill it up with Saudi oil or Canadian oil? I would try to find where we're getting the, the most safety and again, look at the whole picture. Like, what, how do you feel about how Saudi Arabia treats women and gays? I'm not gonna discuss that. You're looking at different questions, thank you. But, okay, nice to talk with you. She wants to look at the whole picture, don't you know? Which oil has the most safety? That's what she says she cares about, as if Saudi Arabia, a brutal dictatorship, has a consumer safety culture, an environmental safety culture. The oil company there, Saudi Aramco, is owned by the dictators, the royal family of Saudi Arabia. Do you think the royal family sues itself if, there, if there's an oil spill? Do you think the press in Saudi Arabia, owned by the royal family, do you think they conduct investigations into oil spills and environmental problems at the oil company owned by the same royal family? Do you really think they're safer or cleaner or greener than in our democracy with our independent courts and press? I'll tell you what's not safe in Saudi Arabia, being a woman, being gay. Being a minority of any sort, no Jews allowed at all in the country, of course. But even other Muslim denominations, like the Shiites, are discriminated against by Sunni Saudi Arabia. No, it's not safe to be anyone in Saudi Arabia, unless you're a prince, I guess. Yeah, I think I know why she didn't want to answer my questions, because that's the question, isn't it? Most of these protesters drove to the protest in a car, burning gasoline made from oil. So they're buying their oil from somewhere. And we know what oil is in that pipeline right now. Saudi oil, Algerian oil, OPEC oil. And we know these protesters are fine with that. They're more than fine with that. They want to keep that. They desperately want to stop that OPEC conflict oil, that Sharia oil, that women-beating, gay-hanging oil from being replaced with Canadian ethical oil. They've never protested against that pipeline before until now. Don't you think they have to answer for that? I asked this friendly fellow, one of the organizers of the protest, named Mike. How do you feel about us importing oil from dictatorships like Saudi Arabia then? I think it's a bad thing. Uh, I think it's a bad thing to be using oil, period. Well, how come you never protest outside the Saudi embassy then? Is there a Saudi embassy here in Hamilton? No, but there's Saudi embassy in Ottawa and there's uh, uh, Saudi and Algerian oil being coming into Canada. I'm probably sure I've been to protests around those areas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Outside the Saudi embassy? I bet you I, haven't. I've been, to, I've been to Ottawa and protested a bunch of, a bunch of embassies there. Do you so. even know where the Saudi embassy is? I don't think you've been there, Mike. No, I don't think I have either. <laughs> of course, Mike hasn't protested outside the Saudi embassy, but that's just something he'd do if he cared about human rights or women's rights or gay rights or minority rights. But how about his simple grasp of the facts of the pipeline of Line 9? that's pumping away every day right now, bringing oil from OPEC and shipping it into Canada. Does he even have a basic grasp of those facts? Well, 
see for yourself. There is Saudi oil in that pipe right now. And you how is there Saudi oil in the pipeline coming from? How is there Saudi oil in the pipeline? Because we import Saudi and Algerian oil. In Alberta? And no, we from the east. From Alberta down here? No, this okay, you so don't know what's in the pipeline right now? About, we're talking about the stuff that's coming down from the Alberta tar sands. Yeah, but it's not in the pipeline right now. The stuff from the Alberta tar sands isn't in the pipeline right now. No, you don't know that? It's coming from the pipeline. They're going to do the reversal on and that's when they're going to ship the bitumen and all that stuff down there. That's, that's, that's what we're fighting. That's the right, reversal. Dear viewer, that's Mike Roy. I'll introduce you to him a bit better later on. He's a senior organizer of this protest. He's one of the leaders of the event. And I don't think he has the foggiest clue about the pipeline at all. Do you? He doesn't know that it's been pumping for decades, pumping imported OPEC oil. He, he didn't know that there's oil from Algeria or Saudi Arabia in it. He said, and I quote, the stuff from the Alberta tar sands isn't in the pipeline right now. He, he said that to me. Well, What's he even protesting? If he, if he thinks there's oil sands oil in the pipe right now, why does he think the company wants to reverse it to, to put oil sands oil in it? Has he even thought about this or read about this for even a minute? Is he, is he not making the world a dumber place? Here, I, I did a little bit of education because I'm a teacher and I, I love the wayward souls and I, I want to save them. Look. Right, and right. but right now it's importing oil from OPEC tankers from yeah. Saudi Arabia and Algeria. You didn't know that? I did know that. So you know there's OPEC oil in that but pipe right biggest, now? Yes, I think the biggest concern, none of us like the pipeline to begin with. Well, why didn't you ever protest it before? We have. But, but when? A long time ago. Liar? Whatever. Okay. You, you, you told me earlier today you've never protested since Saudi. Saudi Arabian embassy, no. Because you don't give a damn. I give it way more damn than you do. You've never protested the Saudis, not once. I have. What I'm trying to do is... Why have you never protested the Saudis? You don't give a sh about people in foreign countries who live under dictatorships because they don't, because you don't make money that way, do you? I don't seem to remember you being at the Egyptian rally when the Egyptian revolution was starting or any of these other rallies. See, where, you're, you're evading my question. People. You love Saudi oil. Deny it. I don't love any oil at all. I don't well, you've never protested Saudi oil, have you? I haven't personally, no. No, of course not. No one here has ever protested Saudi oil. Can't you, you can't say that. I absolutely can't. Tell me who has. I don't know. Yeah, and no one here has. Oh, God, they made me mad. But I bet they put a big smile on the faces at the Saudi embassy to have such protesters doing OPEC's dirty work for them. Look, we all drive cars or take a bus or a plane or a boat or a motorcycle. We all use plastic, which is made from oil, all of us. And until we invent some fantasy fuel of the future, until we invent dilithium crystals or some magic pixie dust, it's either... Oil from Canada or oil from OPEC? Sorry, Switzerland doesn't make oil. Luxembourg doesn't make oil. And so by opposing Canadian ethical oil, by protesting against it, by definition, by process of elimination, these know-nothing protesters are supporting the status quo, importing Saudi oil, conflict oil, Sharia oil, dictatorship oil, whether or not they want to ignore my question, whether or not they're too stupid to understand what's in the pipe right now. One more interview with this friendly lady who had another theory about why Canadian oil was super bad. It doesn't have the interior coating, which will prevent the corrosion from the sand. It doesn't have the exterior. Is there sand in Dilbit? Of course there is. So there, so it's it's Ezra, like you know there's sand. Is, is there sand in what they're going to put in the pipeline? Probably. Probably or, or probably if it's bitumen, right? Is bitumen and sand the same thing? Ezra, are you trying to be cute? With no, I'm just <laughs> now, we've all heard of the oil sands, and that's what it's like in the ground. It's like Mother Nature's giant oil spill tens of thousands of years ago, oil in sand. Now, for centuries, Aboriginals used to waterproof their canoes using the oil sands that literally oozed out of the ground. But it's sticky like peanut butter, and I, I think this lady believes that the oil sands companies just take that sandy, rocky, peanut butter consistency oil sands, who knows, maybe even with twigs and pine cones and the odd squirrel or old boot that gets scooped up and sort of packs it in a pipe and just blasts it through a pipeline for a thousand miles. She, she didn't mention the squirrel part, but she mentioned the sand. Yeah, no, how do I put this? They take the sand out first and they dilute it using something called dill. But that's what they're doing out there in Alberta with all their machines and men. There are trace amounts of microscopic particles in the diluted bitumen dill bit that's shipped in pipes, that's been shipped in pipes in Canada successfully for 25 years now. There are trace amounts of particles 
in any oil. It's regulated. They have to be minuscule, microscopic in size and quantity. Uh, I think this sandy oil lady ought to get together with that sweet oil lady plus the guy who isn't sure what oil is in the pipe now at all. Sweet and sour, maybe. I don't know. He doesn't know. And I think they all ought to put on a class where they all share their knowledge with the world. Lord, help us.